Hey guys, it's Stan from Stan's Custom Creations. Today I'm going to show you how we 3D scanned the chassis of this car so that we can use it in the MRC build. Found this little beast on Marketplace. I do actually have a background in 3D scanning and this was the first proper 3D scanner I bought back in 2020. Uh, it's the Einscan Pro Plus. It's basically a super souped up version of the Einstar. The window that it scans in is a lot smaller so it's better for small objects. Think things up to the size of an engine. Perfect for anything that needs machining but way overkill for what we needed. Which is why I used this. The Shining 3D Einstar. Fantastic little scanner. Yeah, if you're doing this kind of stuff, it's all you need. Don't buy into the hype. This one cost me maybe two grand New Zealand, so a thousand USD. So now you know what scanner I'm using and why I'm using it. I'm going to show you some of the drawbacks of this type of scanner. It can't pick up on reflective or clear objects, and it can't pick up on dark or black objects. So a way to overcome this is to use something like this. It's basically white powder and an aerosol spray. You can spray it on top of any shiny object. And what it does is it coats it in a matte white film. So that's really easy for the scanner to pick up. Only downsides to that is it's very expensive. And it only lasts about 24 hours before it evaporates. And then you've got to do it all over again which is a bit of a pain seeing as that this is about two days worth of scanning. Slightly cheaper option is this, which is dry shampoo. Works really well, same way as that. Doesn't dissolve, so it lasts a bit longer. More clean up in the end though, so a bit of a trade off there. It's quite cheap, quite a lot cheaper than that stuff anyway. But as you'll see in the video, I did something a little bit different, but along the same thought pattern. These scanning dots are primarily used for tracking so that the 3D scanner doesn't lose what it's looking at or where it is in space. The more of these you have the better. Uh, it needs to see at least three but preferably more at any one time within its scanning window. If you watch Chris's video of me 3D scanning the Stagia widebody you'll see we absolutely covered the car and smaller ones of these. That's because I used this scanner and it was a lot of extra work and uh, didn't really get any benefit out of it so we now know using the Einstar as the way forwards. So I got annoyed with the scanning spray not really working as I wanted and the dots falling off so I'm gonna give this a go just masked up all the bits I don't want white everything else is gonna get matte white um, and I figured seeing as the body panels are going to cover it doesn't really matter what colour it is underneath so yeah keep you posted much better scan should pick on that pretty good So you can see I've absolutely covered the entire chassis with these marker dots roughly 100 mils apart. The 3D scanner needs to see at least three points within the scanning area. This allows it to keep track of where it is and helps with the alignment. So here's what it looks like once I've done all the prep. Mark dots are on and I'm actually able to start the 3D scanning. You see on the left is what the 3D scanner is building out in this rear section that I'm scanning. The white is what the camera is currently seeing and then the blue is the data that it's captured. I generally go over one area at least twice just to make sure there's no errors. So 
so we applied the same treatment at the front and painted it white. This helped quite a lot, allowing the scanner to pick up on the geometry much better. Alright, so we're coming in on day three of the scanning. Uh, day one, I prepped and scanned kind of the rear half. Uh, yesterday, I did the sides and the windscreen and then started prepping the front. And now the aim for today is get the front uh, all marked up with the tracking dots and scan the front uh, as much as possible. And also, if I've got time, I'll uh, scan this area in here internally. Um, that'll just give us a bit more information about where we can put a roll cage uh, and things like that and how we can mount it. So the scanning process starts by doing multiple small sections that have an overlap and then in the 3D scanning software you can stitch all of these sections together to form one larger scan. To do this you usually use a point alignment which is where you pick groups of similar points on one scan to the second scan. The idea is that there will be an overlap between the two. Once you've got it as close as you can manually the software will do the rest. You can see here we've got three scans all nicely aligned and if you zoom right in you can see that they're not an actual surface they're just a whole load of points. So what we need to do is to mesh those individual points into a surface. This process is really hard on your computer. It was about this stage when we realized neither of us had a computer powerful enough to generate the mesh. There were so many points my laptop kept on crashing which at the time had 64 gigs of RAM, which is already a lot, but I ended up upgrading to 128 gigs in a desktop computer. Thankfully, after installing the RAM, we managed to mesh each section. So now we can export it out of the scanning software, and I like to use this software called Mesh Mixer to do the post-processing. I believe it was created by Autodesk in about 2014, uh, which is kind of about the time that I started doing 3D scanning. They've stopped support for it, which is a bit of a shame, but it's a really cool software for doing post-processing and basic editing. So generally what I do is I roughly align it in Mesh Mixer just to get to some sort of a coordinate system within a couple of degrees in each way. And I'll repeat this for each individual scan and save them. Then for one individual piece, generally something that's quite central, I'll bring it into SolidWorks. In this software, I use a plugin called Extract 3D. It allows you to create planes and finely tune the mesh alignment and 3D space, ensuring your mesh is properly centered. That's going to be really important later on when I'm modeling because everything is going to be split down the center line of the car and mirrored. We can align the other 3D scan sections to this section, so this essentially becomes the base that we're building from. So next I'll open up a tool called Mesh Lab. This is a great tool for post-processing and retopologizing scan data. There's a few things you can do to tidy up your mesh. First thing will be to remove any floating bits in the scan, any little artifacts. Then after that what I'll do is run a couple of passes of what's called a quadratic edge collapse decimation. Basically what this does is it increases the size of the triangles in the flatter areas where it's less noticeable, thereby reducing the file size quite significantly. I can generally reduce the file size by about 75% without really losing any quality. Then I'll use the alignment tool built into Mesh Lab to align it, very similar to what I did in the scanning tool to align the point clouds. Basically you select matching points on two different scans where there's an overlap and then it aligns it based on that. Once the points based alignment has finished you can click this process button and it uses the scan data to realign it so you'll notice when I click it it very slightly adjusts it to make sure everything's in line. Then I'll export each section individually that way I can bring it into the CAD software piece by piece and turn them on and off as needed. So that's how we post process the scan data for the MRS. This is the way that I've been doing it for years and it works but there may be better options out there that I'm not aware of. If you've done 3D scanning before and you know an alternate method please let us know down in the comments. Always love to hear new ways of doing things. And as you can see this is what we've ended up with. It gives us all the information we need to go ahead and design the MRC body.
Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.